And you know, I think that it is so important, Pastor Kevin, that as a church, we celebrate fathers who are yeah. doing their best. Yes. I believe that it's important that we celebrate fathers who are doing their best. And it's important that we recognize and we encourage men to be who God has called them to be. Amen. Absolutely you, true. You know, there was, there was a Canadian survey that was done, uh, you know, a few years back. And they actually did, they actually went around and asked a thousand men, what does it mean to be a man? And so they got responses from them like, you know, it means to just be tough and suck it up. That's yeah. what it means to be a man. To be strong. That was to one of the answers. To be strong. So that, that if you're a man, you're strong. You're tough. Right. They said, you know, if you're a man, real men don't cry. Real men don't show their emotions. These were things, these were like the top things that they described as being and a real man. And these were Canadian men saying this. Yes. And here's the problem. It's these stereotypes that create confusion about what a man is. Right. Are right. you hearing right. me? Because somehow if you're not naturally one of those ways, right. then, you know, the enemy will try to put seeds in your mind mm -hmm. and in your thinking, thinking somehow you aren't a real man because you don't match these stereotypes. Right. Listen to me. And fathers, you listen to me. Don't put these stereotypes on your children, not boys or girls. Right. Are you hearing me? Right. Because right. you will bring confusion to them and they will not understand who it is that they are right. and who it is that God made them right. to be. Right. You see, if somebody doesn't fall into this old-fashioned stereotype, they begin to question. Well, right. oh, then maybe, maybe I'm not what they thought I was. Right. You right. see, that they, they may be a characteristic uh, you know, to be strong and tough or to not show emotion. And that can be a characteristic of some men or even women. Yeah. But it's not what makes them a right. man. Right. Listen to me. It's right. not what makes them a man. Are you hearing right. me? There's right. so much confusion about what it means to be a man. I want to help clear up the confusion on this yes. Father's Day. Yes. Are you hearing me? You see, while, the, while society has tried to create new definitions, I want to state that I agree with science and the biology is clear. A man is born a man. A woman is born a woman. Are you hearing me? Your personality, your likes, your dislikes don't determine your gender. Right, 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 right. You, you might like one thing or not like something. That doesn't make you a man or make you a woman. Are you hearing me? Right. I was shocked a number of months ago. Supreme Court justice asked what a woman is. She says, well, I can't answer that. How do you be so smart and can't answer elementary school bi biology? Are you hearing me? It's not hard to define a man or a woman, what their gender is. Listen to me. It's simple. You got to hear this. It's simple. Your genitals determine your gender. Oh my. That's it. You are A or B. That's it. Are you hearing? Say, Pastor, I can't believe you just said that. Well, it's just fact. It's basic biology. Pam, 10 years ago, we would never imagine that to discuss what a man or a woman would be controversial. Right. Five years ago, we would not imagine that people would be confused what a man is or what a woman is. Right. Are you hearing me? Yes. You're a one or the other. Yes. You don't get to pick based on yes. your feeling. Yes. Oh my. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you bought into the lie. I ain't trying to offend you. I'm really not. But if you bought into the lie, you need to hear the truth today. Yeah, there's not 542 different genders. Right. It's not unlimited genders. The Bible says there's two. God made man and God made woman. That's it. Yes. That's all there is. Yes. Yes. Now, you've got to hear me today. God made you the way you are no matter what your personality is. Right. Right. Now, if you're a girl and you like to go outside and play around and get dirty, guess what? You're still a girl. You're just a girl that likes to go outside. You're a girl that likes to play sports. That's okay. Right. 
And if you're a boy that isn't into sports, but you know you like to maybe hang around inside, you're still a boy. Right. Don't believe the lie. Right, right. See, the world, Pam, is trying to destroy. They're right. trying to destroy the uniqueness of each person and their right. gender. But listen, yes. they're trying to destroy the importance that you carry as young boys or young girls, as men and women. But we're here today to say we're standing up for who you are, for how God made you to be. Yes. You are important. You are yes. valuable. You are exactly what you are supposed to be. You don't have to get confused. Don't listen to that teacher that doesn't know what they're talking about. Don't believe that lie you are who God has made you to be and we all need to be proud of who God made me to be somebody say you got to be proud of who God made you to be you got to be proud of you God now look at your neighbor tell him say be proud of who God made you to be be proud of who God made you to be be proud of who God made you to be see I think that there is a real attack on gender and I believe specifically on men yep and, re- and that's why know, this Father's Day is so, is so important. important. And this message today is so important. Absolutely. You know, recently there was a viral video on TikTok of women being asked if they needed men. And without hesitating, the majority of the women said no. No, we don't need men. Yeah, see, they said no because they don't, they don't understand, understand what men are. They right. don't understand what the Bible says men. So right. they, they, they believe this, this thing, toxic masculinity Mm. and so if you have a different personality therefore it's toxic so let's get the toxicity Mm. out of society and society will be better but what you have to understand is that is a misunderstanding of what it really means to be a man we're not talking about having toxic personalities we're talking about being who God made you to be And I love it because the Bible help addresses this. Right. God's plan is not confusion. He designed men to be men and women to be women. And both have an important and necessary role in society. And that's why today's message is be a real man, clearing up the confusion. Somebody say, be a real man. Be a real man. All right. Not that this is any, this is a gender stereotype, but put the most deepness you can put in your voice, all right? And say, be a real man. Be a real man. There you go. Be a real man. <laughs> and now, let, I want you to hear this. This message is for both genders and all ages. Ladies, you need to know. What is a real man? You need to be looking for that in your relationship. You need to be laying out those expectations in your relationship. And men, you need to know what you should become. Not what society has told you. Not what somebody else has made up as, like you said, a stereotype. But really what God has designed you to be. and, and, And this is a problem because... We see in our society young men going two directions, and they're both wrong. Unhealthy, yeah. We got some young men chasing a stereotype, which is wrong, and then you got other young men not knowing who they are and going into territories that that I don't even understand. Both extremes are wrong. So today, we're going to clear it up. What does the Bible say a real man is? Because the Bible talks to and about real men. And there's never been a time like now that we need real men to rise up. Right. We need, the, the world needs, the young people needs. You need to know who you are. You need to function in the and God-given role. And fathers need to role. tell their sons, yes. listen to me, say, oh, I'm not like that. I don't talk about it. Well, listen, they're hearing it at school. Right. They're hearing it online. Right. They're hearing it with their friends. They're hearing it with their, so you. If yeah. you say, oh, I'm not, if I'm not going to say anything, I'm going to let them find their own way. No, they don't find their own way. No, You're letting led someone else else. lead your child in the wrong way. Right. So if you stay silent, you're going to let them lead. You're going to let them go down a path that is not healthy, that is not good, that will take them in the wrong direction. You got to determine your heart. You know what? I got to rise up to my young men and young women. I got to talk to them about what God says. I can't let them figure it out by watching social media, by watching TikTok, by watching YouTube, by listening to their rainbow hair teacher. I can't let them figure that out. I'm sorry. I'm a little fired up on this topic because it's killing this generation. 
And we got to rise up and say, well, we're not going to believe the lie. Right, right. We're going to speak the truth. Speak the truth. And the Bible records a powerful instruction that King David gave to his son, Solomon, about being a man. So, okay, okay, wait, wait. So this is good. Good advice. Good so advice. So follow, follow what, you know, David gave his, his son, son. Because the Bible tells in Acts chapter 13, 22, that David was a man after, after God's, God's own heart. heart. So right. he was a guy who loved God. David right. did. So here's this guy who loves God. What did this guy who loves God say to his kids? Right. And here's the thing about David. David loved God, but that doesn't mean he was perfect. And right. he didn't make any mistakes. Right. Sometimes we're looking for, for perfection, but he was just like us. He had flaws. Right. He had issues in his personal life. Right. Like every oh, okay. single one don't of us. Don't believe the lie from the devil that if you're saved, you don't have issues. Your family doesn't have issues. Right. You don't have problems. You never fight. You never are you never disagree you're just all perfect that's a lie listen that's david a lie. was a man after god's own right. heart and he had family issues yes. he had personal yes. issues he yes. walked through some stuff but god still declared and it and right. it's repeated in the new testament in the book of acts that he was a man after god's right. heart right all right and so here it is, the Bible records that he, David messed up being a father. Yeah. More than once David messed up in, in being a dad. And what, so much so that one of his sons was so bitter at him that one of David's sons, he tried to assassinate him and overthrow his kingdom. Wow, wow, wow. Now that's having some daddy issues. That's having some daddy issues. That's having daddy issues. You, you got a son that says, I'm going I'm, I'm to And, and he's not only you. thinking, I want to kill you. He makes a plot right. to kill his own father. I mean, that's daddy issues. And so here it is. David had dysfunction in his family. Right. So just listen to me. Don't, don't believe that if you have some dysfunction that somehow you don't love God. Somehow you aren't a man of God or a woman of God because you have some dysfunction in your family. Listen, we all have some dysfunction in our right. family. Right. Are you hearing me? Right. It isn't about the dysfunction. It's about our heart. heart. For David was a man after God's heart. heart. It's about right. our decision. It's about our choices. So right. even though we may have dysfunction, we love God. We go after God. And that right. makes us a man. Man or woman of God. God. So here it is, David on his deathbed. He calls his son Solomon, and he gives him powerful instructions to be a real man. Okay. So it says this in 1 Kings 2, 1 to 3. It says, when the time drew near for David to die, he gave a charge to Solomon, his son. Okay, now listen to this. This is good. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready for the next verse. So he's about to die. He's about final, to die. You know, you're about to die. Let me give you my final words of I wisdom. This is what yeah. I want you to remember. Right. I'm about to die. You are going to take over as king. I need you to hear me. What I'm about to say is really important. Right. Right. So now I want to hear what David said in verse 2. Okay. Okay. So he says, I'm about to go the way of all the earth. He said, so be strong. Act like a man. Whoa, whoa, stop. What? what he, you hear what this, what King David said? He says, be strong and act like a man. Now, some people, use, even on the first part, you say, Pastor, you can't say those things in our society. Listen, David, David, and it's recorded in God's word, said, be strong, act okay. like a man. All right? Look at a man around you right now. Say, be strong, act like a man. Be strong, act like a man. All right. So, so he said, be strong, act like a man, and then he went on and said what? And he goes on and says, and observe what the Lord your, go your God requires. Okay. Walk in obedience to him and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you got to be, you, listen, listen, right. you got to be strong. You got to act like a man. Right. You got to follow God, follow, follow God. his ways. Right. And if you'll do that, God says, here's the promise, right. not confusion, not, not, not uncertainty, but here's yes. the promise. I'm going to prosper you wherever yes. you go. Yes. And so if we yes. make a choice today to say, God, I want to be strong. I want to act like a man. I want to uh, walk in obedience to you, right. to your word, to right. do what you said. Get ready, because prosperity is coming your yes. way. Get ready. It's going to follow you every single place yes. you go. My God, this is not my opinion. This is not some extreme faith doctrine. I'm just reading you the Bible right now. God said, honor me. Put me first. Put me yes. in everything you do and yes. get ready for prosperity everywhere you go. Is anybody say, I want that today? Yes. 
I want it. But here's what we got to do. We, yeah. Here's the thing. We got to do what God right. says if we're going to have right. what God says. Right. So you can't get what God says without doing what right. God says. Right. So what does God say? He says, be strong, act like a man, observe to do what God requires. Right. Follow the Bible. And when you follow the right. Bible, you will bring the prosperity of God in every part of your life right. and in every place you go to. I think that sounds pretty good. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. So this is a call. David is telling his son, it's a call to step up and do what God has designed men to do. Yeah, step up and be a real man. Step up and be a real man. And so some people have this very narrow view of masculinity or right. manliness. Right. But the Bible shows the diversity of personalities and interests of godly men. Now, this is important. You need to hear this. Because especially if people who carry that old-fashioned stereotype of what right. a man is, yes, the Bible tells us that, the stories of people's lives are there right. for an example for right. us. Good examples, bad examples, but right. they're an ex there is an example for us, right. all right? And so, right. so I love it because here it is, there's this personality, these two brothers in Genesis. Yes. yes. And, 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 and listen to hear about these two brothers in, Gen in Genesis. Right. What is it? So it tells us in Genesis 25, Jacob and Esau, they were twin brothers. So Okay, so, so they, they, they're... They're, you can't get much closer than being right. twins. Right. All right? So they were twins. They All were right? twins. They were both masculine men. They both later in their life ended up being used by God, but they were very different. Okay, so this is what's important right here. Genesis, so here's these two twins yep. that were masculine, mightily used of God, but entirely different personalities. Entirely different. So, so Genesis 25, 27 tells us this. It says, as the boys grew up, Esau became a skillful hunter. All right. So he's what the stereotype says is a man's a man. man. He's a real man. But 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 it does that that's commentary that people add in that they shouldn't add in, right. all right? right? So okay. So right. he grew up as a boy, Esau became a skillful hunter. He, he was an outdoorsman, but Jacob had a quiet temperament, preferring to stay at home. Oh. So was was Jacob was he maybe the wrong gender? Mm. Was Jacob not a real man? Mm. Because he had a quiet personality and liked to stay at home? I, I, you know what we called that when I was growing up? We said, oh, Jacob, mama's boy. <laughs> Jacob, mama's boy. Esau, he is a man, but Jacob, he is a mama's boy. But now we say, now we don't even say you're mama's boy. Now we say, maybe you're in the wrong place. Uh, Maybe you need to take puberty blockers or get a surgery or something. Now we really take it to a whole different level. But here it is in the Bible. It right. gives us these two uh, twins born at the same time from the same parents, used both by God, but different personalities. Right, right. Jacob so was a hunter. Yeah, Esau. Oh, sorry, Esau, Esau was a hunter. Jacob yeah. wasn't a hunter. Right. He wasn't a sportsman. You know, he didn't like to go out and play ball with the boys. It's too sweaty. <laughs> it's too hot out there. No, no. Jacob wasn't a hunter. He wasn't a sportsman. He wasn't a warrior. He didn't get the thrill from the kill. Right, right. Are you hearing me? He preferred to stay home. Maybe he liked cooking. Well, we know he know liked cooking. cooking. Matter of fact, yeah. he did like cooking. Matter of fact, they said he was a good cook. Yep. Oh, do you think God made a mistake? Put him in the wrong body? Oh, my. Don't believe this foolishness. Don't but we need to stand up and say, no, you are the way God made you. You like right. it, you like it. You don't like right. it, you don't like it. Don't right. question your manhood or your womanhood because of the way God made you right. to be. Right. I would say probably Jacob even like fashion. Yeah, you know? Yeah, is yeah. that you stay at home, your mama's boy. You know, you probably like he probably like fashion too. You see, his brother Esau was a hunting machine. He liked guns, he liked arrows, he liked the thrill of the kill. Yeah. That was Esau. Esau would have probably had a, a subscription to the outdoor hunting magazine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. While his brother Jacob probably had a subscription to GQ magazine. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe right, right. or maybe the the best baker award 
Because <laughs> we know we like to cook. Yeah, yeah. But God never rebuked him for his characteristics. Listen to me, parents. You've got to see your children the way you are. You've got to appreciate them, value them right. the way you are. Yes. It's when you put, you force stereotypes on them that right. you will begin to cause them to question. And then when they go into the school system, now all of a sudden they doubt who they are. Fathers, right. mothers, listen to me. Let the child be who God made them yes. to be. Yes, yes, yes. Listen to me. Being athletic doesn't make you a man. Right. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Having a six pack doesn't make you a man. Right. Listen to me. Smoking and drinking beer don't make you a man. Right. Even if it was the old fashioned bud. How many women you can get doesn't make you a man. Right. Come on. Because if being with women makes you a man, then I guess the dog can be a man. The parrot can be a man. Our animal can get. Listen to me. Re procre uh, procreation doesn't make you a man. It's right. just an ability, a yes. byproduct of being a man. Right. It does not make you a man. Right, right. So then you see, you say, well, then what did David mean when he said to Solomon, his son, be strong and act like a man? Right. Well, see, now that's a good question. Right. Because when he said, act like a man, he was referring to maturity and bravery. Mm. Are you hearing me? Right. So right. when he said, be strong and act like a man, he says, grow up and be mature right. and act like a man. Right. You are stepping now from, from this place where you are as the son, where everything's looked after you, but right. you're about to take over. Right. So I need you to be courageous. Right. I need yes. you to step up. Yes. I need you to say, I'm going to be strong and act like a man. Right. I am going to literally be who God's called me. Strong. I love it because courageous and firm in your faith. Right, right. So when he's saying, see, here's the thing. David's a man after God's home. He gives his son Solomon the best advice. You want to be strong and act like a man? Here's what I want you to be courageous and firm in your faith. So listen to me, parents. Instead of encouraging your young people in their sports so much, how about we encourage them in their faith even more? Are you hearing me? I ain't against sports. I had a son that loved sports. I had a daughter that was, that was good at sports. Uh, you know, my first two were pretty athletic pretty athletic but I'll tell you this I, I, I don't care if they play athletics I, none of that matters that won't affect your eternity listen here's what I care I care about your faith I care about that you have strong in your relationship with God and so here's when David's telling Solomon and he's saying strong he literally he's not talking about his muscles he's right. not talking about his physical strength right. he's talking about courage and farming your faith you're right. about to step right. up and be a man that means it's going to take courage Right. Being a man in this generation is not for wimps. Being right. a man in this generation is not for the easy. Listen, yes. being a man in this generation is going to require you to be courageous and yes. firm in your faith. Yes, yes, yes. So I love it. He says, be strong, act like a man. And you know what this phrase, act like a man, actually means? It means maturity and bravery. Right, right, right. So courageous, strong your faith. And with maturity and bravery. So what he was really telling his son was, it doesn't matter who you are. doesn't matter your personality types. doesn't matter your likes or dislikes. Here's what's really important. Be courageous and firm in your faith. Be mature and brave. It right, doesn't right. matter your personality types. What matters is who you are inside right. and bringing out who you are yes. inside. Can right. somebody say, be strong and act like a man? Be strong and act like a man. See, there comes a time in every person's life where you aren't a little child anymore. Right. And God expects us all to come to this place of maturity. Right. And so saying act like a man is maturity. Well, maturity means taking responsibility for your actions. Right. We can't just keep on blaming our parents or blaming somebody else's for the choices we make all of our lives. You know what? That might have worked when you were 10 or 12, but when you come to maturity, it's time to say, you know, things might have been difficult when I was a kid. My parents might have messed up some, but now I'm taking responsibility for my life, for my actions. Listen, we have a generation, and parents, we've, we've done wrong on this one. you got to hear me. So many times we've done wrong on this. We've not taken 
uh, told our children to take responsibility for your own actions. Right. You know, when I, you listen to me, when I was young and I would go to my mom and complain about a situation or a, a, a person or something, my mom would say, so I don't care about them, tell me about you. What did you do? Tell me about you. Tell me what you did. Tell me how you acted. Tell me how you responded. I don't care about them. They're not my child. You're my child. Tell me about you. And she'd always say, Kevin, you got to take responsibility. And, and, you know, sometimes they say, it's not my fault. I was just with them. And then they did some stuff wrong. And she'd say, Kevin, trouble attracts trouble. Take responsibility for your right. action. Kevin, you hang around with people that are in trouble. You're going to get in trouble. Whether right. you said it, did it this time or not. She'd right. always add this time. Because it's the next time, maybe it wasn't it, it wasn't them, it was you. But you got to take responsibility. Yes. That's what maturity means. Right. That's what he's telling his son. Get right. ready, because now, no more finger pointing, no more blaming others, right. but take responsibility. responsibility. Somebody say, that's maturity. That's maturity. See. Maturity means that we follow through with our commitments. Okay, okay. Don't make excuses why you can't do something. If you committed to it, then do everything in your power to make it happen. See, see, here's the thing. The Bible says it's better not to make a promise. Make it, yes. Than right, make then make a promise, and a commitment, and not keep it. Right. And here's the problem. We've, we have a generation, oh, I can't do it today. There's a cloud in the sky. Oh, I can't do it today. Oh, I felt something in my leg. I feel something in my leg. It ain't really ain't that bad. It's just like you felt it. You, you need, really what you need to do is just stretch it out, right? And so the problem is that we need to take responsibility. You know, we got to stop blaming parents. We got to stop blaming other people. And we've yeah. got to follow through with right. our commitments. So right. if you say it, do, do it. it. Let me tell you this. There's times that I've said, oh, I wish I'd never said it. But I did. So right. now I'm going to suck it up and do it. Right. You know what? I wish I hadn't opened my mouth, but I did. And there's times when we got to realize maturity says you opened your mouth. Right. Now do Follow it. Through. You made the commitment. Do it. I don't feel like it. I mean, you know, I don't feel like doing half. I'm so tired, dog tired this morning. My eyes were all puffy. I'm trying to push the puffiness out of my eyes. Listen to me. There's all kinds of times we don't feel like doing things. But right. if, if we're going to be mature, it isn't having our, our life run by our feelings. Right. But we got to follow, follow through, through with our commitments. Right. Can somebody say maturity means follow through with our commitments? Maturity means follow through with our commitments. Yeah. Maturity means having self-control. Oh, okay. This this generation, there's some that struggle with this. It's, it's don't be driven by our emotions, freaking out when something doesn't go your way because that's what little children do. When children are little, they have a hard time controlling their emotions. They have a hard time keeping it, you know, saying I'm going to have self-control in this situation. But maturity means wow. that I just don't get driven by how I feel. I just don't get driven by how somebody else makes me feel. No, yeah. I make a choice to have self-control. I make the choice to say how I'm going to respond. I make the choice to say how I'm going to act. That is part of maturing, coming to that place where we are who God designed us to be. And this is what David told his son Solomon. Guy, you got to get ready. It's your turn. Right. You got to step up now. You got to mature. You got to act like, like you got to be strong and act, act like, like a man. man. See, maturity means perseverance when it's tough. Mm, Perseverance yes. in hard things. Right, right. I'll never forget. When, when our oldest son, Justin, went on a, a full athletic scholarship to the States in, in, in Michigan. And the coach that he was playing for was not a nice man. Mm -hmm. He was not a nice man. I had seen it with my own eyes. He was, he was not nice. No. And, and, and Justin was there on full scholarship. And it was worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, his scholarship. It was a full ride in, in school in the States. It was all of his kit, his soccer gear. It was, it, it was his spending money. It was a brand new yeah, iPad laptop, and brand new laptop. Yeah. And, and he, it was a full ride. He was living large. But playing for this coach, this coach was not a nice man. Right. And Justin got so discouraged and so frustrated, he wanted to quit. And he'd start calling us and say, I don't know why I'm here. There's no point. Uh, you know, I, I, I could go someplace else, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he, he was literally just frustrated at his wit's end. And we would tell Justin, Justin, I'm not saying this man is nice. I'm telling you, don't let him rob you of a university year and put you a year behind. Right. I'm telling you, Justin, listen, you got to know how to persevere. 
And I'm telling right. you, persevere when it isn't easy. And I'm not saying right. this is easy. Right. Don't, listen, here's what I want you to do, Justin. Don't let him make you feel less about yourself. Right. You are who God made. You are incredible. Yes. Don't let him, don't let him, don't let him think that, you know what, uh, you're not important, you're not valuable. You need to realize who you are. And listen to me. We know it's not easy, Justin. Right. But don't quit. Are right. you hearing me? We right. know it's not easy, but don't quit. Keep right. on going. We yes. know it's not easy, but keep on going. Yeah. Listen to me. If you quit once, it will become easy to quit in difficult right. situations in your right. life. This problem is too tough. Quit. That problem is right. too tough. Quit. Right. This thing's too difficult. Quit. Right. But we got to rise up and say, yeah. I'm not going to quit when the going gets tough. All right. You know, I know it was tough on him. And I, w I was not trying to be unsupported. Do you know that multiple times I would literally um, Saturday morning get up at 5.30 in the morning. I would drive to Michigan. Yeah, six I would hour meet, drive. Six hour drive. I would meet Justin. I would take him out for lunch. Those days, he was, you know, I'd take him out to like Outback Steakhouse or some place where he could just cheap, cheap food that filled his belly. So I'd take him there and I would go to Outback and I'd spend an hour or two with him and I'd talk to him and encourage him. And then I'd head back home another six hours, 12 hours driving one day, head another six hours back home. Then to just be ready for Sunday morning to preach. I'm not saying we don't care about our children. I'm not saying right. we don't love them. I'm not right. saying we don't value them. I'm saying we have to help them yes. make the right decision yes. when it isn't yes. easy. Make the right yes. decision when it's, you know, I had to go so many times. But listen, this was a lesson that helped him become a real man and learn right. what it meant to persevere right. when it wasn't easy. Right. And do you know that after that? Justin gave up soccer, but the life lesson never changed. Right. And he went on to get a full scholarship at University of Toronto to get his master's degree. Right. He went on to get a full 100% ride scholarship to Oxford University. For his, and matter of fact, he got so much money in scholarships and grants. When he was finished, he had tens of thousands of dollars in the bank. No debt and ten. That's how much scholarship money. They were throwing money at him. Canadian government was throwing. The, over there, the universities, they were throwing money at him. Yeah. How did he do that? Because he learned a lesson. Mm. Don't give up when it's tough. Right. you got to learn to persevere when you, everything's right. inside. He's going, no, I hate this. But you see, sometimes we discourage ourselves from walking in our maturity because we, we say words like this, I can't do it. I tried my best. I got to give up. I can't do this. I can't handle it anymore. And we say those words and we discourage ourselves. Right. Listen to it. Don't let them come from your mouth. Don't let them come from your children. Right. But be like David when he yeah. gave wisdom to his son Solomon and said, come on, maturity. Maturity says yes. you're going to get through even when it's tough. Yeah. Somebody say yes. Yes. Yeah. See, this was a characteristic that brought him real success. When he said, be a real man, real perseverance through hardship. Yeah, real. that's what brings real success. And right. the problem is, we can't look at somebody else, how come they get success? we got to realize this maturity factor is, is really a, an essential a element, an essential key for seeing success. Right, to see that success. Don't let your problems cause you to quit. Don't do follow through on your commitments. Don't blame other people for where you are in life. Not these, your mom, not your dad, not, not nobody. Not anybody else. See, these Bible verses, they're pretty radical. They're radical compared to what the world today wants to tell us, but they're essential for your success. Right. He said, if you, David said to his son, said, you are going to prosper if you'll do these everywhere things. everywhere you go. So everywhere here's the thing. Go. We can't want God to prosper us in everything right. and everywhere we go unless right. we're doing, what? willing to do what he right. said. And what right. he said was, now be strong, be courageous, act right. like a man. Right, right. David said it requires being a real man. And here's the reality. The blueprint, the Bible, I'm sorry, is the blueprint for being a real man. Yes. If you're saying, what does it mean to be a real man? If you're saying that, well, society can't tell us and other people have, where do I know how to do it? The Bible is the blueprint. Okay. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, the Bible is the blueprint for being a real man or a real woman. 
The Bible's a blueprint for being a real man or a real woman. Now listen to me. We're we're because it's Father's Day. We're talking to men, all right? Right. All right. Listen, listen to this powerful text. Because somebody says, "Oh, it says act like a man." That's just that's some Old Testament passage. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Mm-hmm, you misunderstand. Listen, First Corinthians chapter sixteen, verse thirteen and fourteen. Look at this. It says, "Be watchful." Look at this. Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. What, were, what did we just hear? That He's repeating the advice right. that Solomon gave David. And now what does he say? Yeah. Act like men. All right. So here it is. The apostle Paul said, be watchful. Stand firm. Okay. Act like men. Be strong. And let it all be done in love. Are you hearing this? He's repeating yeah. what, what, what David, David told said. Solomon. You want to be successful, then you got to be watchful. Look it around. Stand firm in your faith. Yeah. No matter what winds blow, act like men and be strong. Be strong. Stand wow. Stand firm. I think the most manly thing that you can do is not to make money, it's to serve and obey God. All right. Nothing wrong with making money. No, nothing wrong with making money. But I'll tell you this, it's got to choose. I'm choosing to stand firm in my faith. I want my child to leave my house and realize that standing firm in the faith is the most, number one, most important thing you can do. Right. More important than anything else is to stand firm. Firm. More important than sports. More important than relationship. More important than having fun. More important, all those things, good job. They're all important. They're all valuable. But here's number one. Stand Stand firm firm. in the faith. Everybody say, stand firm in the faith. Stand firm in the faith. Say it again. Stand firm in the faith. Stand firm in the faith. Now look at a man say, real men stand firm in the faith. Real men stand firm in the faith. This is what God says. Because the reality is that anybody... And listen, I like, I'm sorry. Listen to me. You ladies, ladies, listen to me. Ladies, listen to me. You don't be picking some guy who got money or got looks or got a car. Are you listening to me? Okay. You better pick one who is firm in, in their faith. faith. Pick one who's firm in your faith, and you will prosper. If you pick one just on looks, looks will wear out. If you pick one on money, his money will manipulate you. Pick one who's firm in In the the faith. faith. Hallelujah. Sorry. Firm in the faith. Well, any person can go with the flow and do what everybody else is doing and say what everybody else is saying, but it takes a real man, it takes a real woman to say, no, that's wrong. I'm going to stand up for what's right. I'm going to stand up for what God says. I'm going to stand up for what the Bible says. According to God's word, according to the Bible, it says this, the test of manhood is keeping God's laws. That's the primary test. The this primary is the test. primary test. Yeah. Is keeping God's laws. What does it really mean? We say act like a man, act like a man. What does it mean? It means to lead in a godly way. So it doesn't mean a stereotype. It doesn't mean It's not mean about a, a body type. It's not about an interest. Right. It's not about sports. It's right. not about women. Right. It's about our yes. faith. It's about our character. Yes. It's about who we yes. are. That's a real, real man. man. Right. To lead in a godly way. Families need godly men to step up and lead by how they ever. live. More now than ever. Listen, I want you to hear this. The church, children and young people in the church who don't have their fathers present, they need some men, real men in the church who will step up and lead by example and show these young boys and show these young men as they grow what it means to be a real man. That right. it doesn't mean to be a real man that you just have some kids and leave them with the baby mama and go have another baby mama and do your own thing. That's not a real man. They need godly men to rise up and say a real man keeps their commitments. A real man walks in maturity. A real man follows what God has called him to do. A real man perseveres even when things get tough. This generation needs to see this. And let me me say this. I love and appreciate every woman. Now listen to me, women. On Mother's Day... I don't say to single fathers, well, if, if, if you're a father, you're a single father, then you can come up here on Mother's Day and because you're mother and father. No, you aren't. You're a father. Right. And it's a tough role because you're doing both. And it's the same on Father's, on father's Day. We, we acknowledge 
the role of moms and single moms. We honor you. We bless right. you. We have, we have so much respect for you and who you are and what you do. But you got to understand, you are a mom. You aren't a mom and dad. Right. So you got you to, right. so, because if you think you're a mom and dad, you try to be the solution to everything. If you realize you are right. a mom only, now then, well, what am I going to do? I'm a mom only. My, my son needs a man. What am right. I going to do? Well, now, rather than trying to be both, I now look to God yes. and say, God, I need you yes. to do what I cannot do. Right. I need you to step yes. in and the Bible. Bible says right. he will be father to the, the fatherless. Father. Hallelujah. Right. So you don't right. got a man in the house. Right. Your child's not disadvantaged. They got God yes. stepping in and saying, let me help you. Right. Let me walk close. Right. He might not be there, right. but I won't leave you. Right. I won't forsake you. Right. I won't turn my back. You. I won't leave his orphan. Right. God is on your side. can't be both no, but that's where you both. rely on God right, right you say God I need you and you listen to me so sometimes some people might look and say pastor why you always talk to the little kids you always like half the time there's, there's adults and they're important and they want to talk to you and you're you're talking to little kids why? Because I really believe what you just said. I believe we have to be a godly example. And it yeah. doesn't start when they're 20. If you try to be a godly example when they're 20 or when they're 15, right. you already missed it. The doubts are coming in. Yeah. you, you yeah. got to start yeah. when they're young. And you got to just listen to me. I, I, wanna, I, I don't want to... I don't want to love, I don't want to, I was going to call somebody's name on the, that you see on the news, but I won't do it. You don't, you don't want to love them in a weird way. You want to show godly right. love. Yes. A godly love that it will impact the children and they're going to go, wow, see, that's, now I know what a, a real man is. That guy is a definition. He, was, he looked at me. He listened to me. Right. He talked to me. He, yeah. he, he got down on my level. He was kind. He was, that's a real man. Are yeah. you hearing me? Yeah. That's a real man. And that is the assignment of every man in this church. Yeah. Listen to me. Older men, uh, uh, young married men, even young men, you got to say, let me be one who pours into yeah. somebody else and right. helps them rise up right. to be the people God's yeah. called them to be. Right. We need real men who use the word of God as the blueprint to define what it means to be manly. So faith first. Right. So faith, faith first. first. Faith, faith first. first. But what are the other things that, well, listen, it's manly to pray. All right. I want you to hear this. It's manly to pray. All right, say it again. First, it's manly to pray. First Timothy. Is that in the Bible? That's in the Bible. First Timothy 2, 6, it says this. In every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands, lifted up to God, free from anger and controversy. I want you to hear this. I we love, love the ladies. I love we the ladies. We thank God I for the ladies. So thankful for but all men, the women we talking to you today. For too long, too many churches have looked to the women to be the ones who pray things through. We want intercessors. We want women. We call the women who pray. Men. God has called men to pray. I just want to say this. I'm so thankful for the men at HWC. Yeah, we got good men. Who lead the way in prayer. We got good young men. Good We, call, we got good young single men. We got pray. young, great yes. married men, older yes. men. Yes. Single married. We got great men. Right. Who pray. I'm thankful for the men who pray in this church who pray. I'm thankful for the men who come to prayer and, and lead the way and pray. I'm thankful for the men who work in the children's department and they bring the kids together and they say, come on kids, let's pray. I'm thankful for the men who do that. I'm thankful for the men who, who lead the way and say, praying is cool. Praying is masculine. Praying is manly. Praying is what real men do. They rely on God. They call on God. They trust Trusting God. They turn to God as their and say, God, you're my help, you're my strength. They don't freak out and look for other things. That's the real man. I believe this that God wants every believer to be a person of prayer. Right. Every believer. But men, it's a calling to lead your homes, to lead in your workplaces, to lead in the church as men of prayer. Yeah, you can't just lead in your home or if everybody is that, nobody's leading in the church. Right. And then we get this, people say, oh, it's a lot of women. We're like, no, there's right. good men. Yes. And listen to men, men rise up. You got to yes. take it on a few fronts. Yes. I didn't say, I remember I told you, being a man ain't for wimps. Being a man ain't easy. You got to yes. rise up. Yes. I got to show leadership in my
my home yes. as a godly yes. man. Yes. I got to show leadership in the church yes. as, a as a godly, godly man. man. I got to rise up. It ain't yes. easy, all that, but I'm going to do what God called me to yes. do. I'm going to be a man of faith. I'm going to be a man of prayer. Right. This is a real yes. man. Right. Somebody say a real man. A real man. Is a man of faith. Is a man of faith. Say a real man. A real man. Is a man of prayer. Is a man of now prayer. Now look at a man around you and say, I'm glad you're that kind of man. Yes. I'm glad you're that kind See, of man. See, I believe this, that you can only lead in the right way when you learn to pray. Yep. And more prayer, let me tell you this, more prayer will result in less adultery. Okay. More prayer will result in less pride. Okay. More prayer will result in less outrage and anger toward others. Right. More prayer will result in stronger businesses and greater prosperity. Right. More prayer will result in happier homes and families. Right. More prayer will result in stronger marriages. Right. More prayer will result in growing ministries. Yeah. More prayer will result in young men and women who are following and they will rise up to know who they are called to be. More prayer is a powerful thing. And listen to me, Jesus was a man's man. Jesus was a man, but he was first a man of prayer. Yeah. He was a man of prayer. He was a man's man, but he was a man of prayer. He was a man of prayer. Man of prayer. You, you see, so so we will, we gotta we if we're gonna be the be real man, then right. we gotta have faith is our, our is our yep. primary purpose. Yep. We gotta be people of prayer. Right. And listen, it's manly to serve. Okay, Are you hearing come on. me? Serving is not women's business. Mm. If you've ever been to my house, listen to me. If you've ever been to my house or see me in these settings, I don't sit on the couch and let everybody bring me my drinks and and uh, bring me my pipe. I don't have one, but you know, I don't let them. Do no, that's not me. I get up, say, what needs to be done? I'll help with what I need to help with. Right. Real right. men yes, know how do. to yes, serve. Listen to me. Because it says, let it be done in love. So listen to me. Real men don't just get served. That's not real men. Right. That's 1960s. Right. Real men know how to serve. serve. We don't buy the stereotype. L listen, listen to what you say. Oh, I don't know if I, I believe that. I, 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 you know, I think it's a women's place. It's a, listen, stop listening to those old-fashioned sermons. Listen, block right. them from your YouTube. Right. Are you hearing? Right. Block right. those yes. old-fashioned. They are not yes. helping you to right. be a man of God right. and be the one call right. God has called you to be. Listen to what it says. In Mark chapter 10, verse 45, it says this. For even the Son of Man, Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve. Right. Jesus, as a man, came to serve. Serve. Jesus came to serve. Jesus came to serve. So it's manly to serve. Right. Godly men but, lead but, by but serving it, others. I, I like when people serve me. Well, that's why spas are so, like, women love spas. Many of them. You know why? Because right. they're serving so much, it's nice to have the flip script. Mm. You know, to flip that script and let somebody yeah, serve yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Listen to me. Don't believe the stereotype. We all need to serve. We all, we need, all to need to step up. Yes. We all need to follow the pattern right. of Christ. Right. Serving I, isn't just for ladies. Right. Serving isn't a, uh, a feminine. You know, serving, serving isn't just for kids. Right. Serving is for real men. Yes. Godly men yes. lead by serving. Yes. Man, how do you lead in your house? By, by serving. serving. Listen to me, man. How do you lead in your house? By, by serving. serving. Not by watching TV and sitting down. Not by letting somebody else. Real men lead by serving. Now, I realize for those even a little older than me, this is hard because you grew up that you are the king of the castle. Have I ever said I was the king of my castle? No. Never. Never. You know why? Because my family isn't my servants to serve the king. Matter right. of fact, if I'm a godly man, I'm going to serve them. Right, right. I'm right. going to serve them. Right. And that's what godly men yes, do. Yes, they serve. Listen to me. If you're a single lady and you're saying, you know what, I want to find a godly guy someday, you should look at how they serve. Watch for how they serve. Do they serve in the church willingly? Do oh, they no, serve? not right now. You know, they're having a hard time. There's no good churches in their area, so they can't do it right now. Yeah, well, then I can't mm, have a relationship with you Stay away. Right Don't now. believe the lie. 
Don't believe the story. No. They, they might believe it, but it's wrong. You don't, don't even, don't even like wink at them, say fix it, and, and we'll, we can get, you know. Mm. No, no, don't, don't bait them. Just say, mm, you need to fix that. You got to get around that. There ain't no perfect people. There ain't no perfect churches. Right. And guess what? If you go to a church, even if it was perfect, the moment you show up, it won't be perfect anymore. So right, get yourself right, right, to church. Right, right. So that's what we do. And ladies, you better look for yourself right. for a man who serves in God's house. Right. It, I'm not promising a perfect life, but I'm promising it will be a lot better if your man serves in church. It's a good start. If they it's serve in church, start. if they serve in their home, if they serve their parents, if they serve their siblings, if they do, that's a good start. And if they don't, then just keep right on walking. That's yeah. what I just keep right on walking. And guys, here it is. If you learn to serve and experience, you'll experience God's blessing. Serving brings God's, for men and women, for every person, serving brings the blessing of God in your life. And this is, this is so important that we are called to do this. So it's, it's manly to pray. It's manly to serve. And I need you to hear this. This is so important. It's manly to live full of the Holy Ghost. Yes. It is manly to live full of the Holy Ghost. You know, we were talking, Pastor Kevin, about serving. And in the book of Acts, it talks about how the disciples, they, they said, you know what, we need some more time to pray. We need some more time to, to, to preach, to do the things that we're called to do. And so they were looking for seven godly men, for seven real wait, wait. men. So, so seven godly people to serve? No, men. They were looking for they, men. They were looking for seven godly women who had the female role. No. And knew how to serve? In fact, they were looking for men to serve women. They were looking for godly men to serve the widows. This is New Testament? Yes. This is, this New is Testament. Bible? Yes. Seven godly men that could serve people, including serve serving widows. women? Right. Oh, I, I need to see that Bible verse. I need to see that Bible verse. I don't so, know. So it's in Acts chapter 6. It says we need the God, men to serve the widows. Who and you know bring and them so their the dinners. And so the text says. And so it says in, in Acts 6.3. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, who we can use to appoint over this business. That they can serve. They're, they're distributing food. They're right. helping widows. Right. They're helping orphans. They're doing all this. And who right. are we looking for? If we're looking for seven men who don't think that's below them, right. who don't think they just need right. to be in the pulpit with right. a mic in their right. hand, but right. are willing to serve. Right. And the qualification for these seven men, they give some qualifications, good reputation, and yes. full of the, of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm looking for some yes. men who know how to serve that are full of the Holy Ghost. We got any men full of the Holy Ghost in this house? If you're full of the Holy Ghost, raise your hands. Yes. Come on. If you're that kind of man, I didn't say if you're perfect. I didn't say if you have it all together. But a good man full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yes. So in order to serve, you were supposed to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Being filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom, it sets godly men apart right you're saying what is what sets me apart from it sets you apart and empowers you to live out the qualities that that is you know because you can look at these expectations of what it means to be a man that oh it's not athletic and it's not how my build or how I look it's all of these things it's following God how do I do that be full of the Holy Ghost right. because there are so many temptations and there are so many distractions in the world for, in, for men and for women, but there are so many things around us. So being a godly man, it's not an easy task. Being a real man, act like a man, as according to the Bible, it's not an easy task. That's why in the Old Testament, David said it to his son. In the New Testament, Paul said it to the men in the church. Be strong and act like men. But how do we do this? Be full of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Get full of the Holy Ghost and yes. you'll be able to accomplish. You'll be able to do. You can do this well. You can lead the way that God has designed you to lead when you're full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe this more now more than ever before. The world needs an example of real men, real men according to the Bible. Right. Men who are humble, men who are serving, not, men who not, are, not drinkers, jokers, and smokers. Right. Right. They need real men following the, the word of God. Right. That's what this generation That's needs. What this and generation let me tell you, if we don't give it to this generation, they're going to be the first step in the line for their gender confusion. Mm. Are you hearing to me? 
They're going to be first in line. But if real men will rise up and say, I'm going to show them. That I ain't looking just to be a, a right. drinker, a smoker, or a toker. There's right. an old-fashioned word. All right, you know what? I'm going to go for them. I'm going to show them the right way to live. Our world needs to see. We need God. Listen to me. We need godly men to rise up. You say, Pastor, you never preached a Father's Day message like this. You're right. I have it. But it's time. This is, this is not just any old day. I see what's going on in our world today, and we need a challenge to go out. We need, you need to hear me today, men. You need to hear me today, women. You need to hear me today, young men. You need to hear me today, young men, women. We need real men. We need godly men. We need to rise up. We need godly women to support and respect the values of godly men. We got to stop playing the world's way. We got to rise up and be who God's called us to be. It ain't some old-fashioned stereotype. I'm not going to try to conform you to a stereotype. I'm going to try to lose you in who God says you are to be. Woo! Immature fathers mold people to stereotypes. Instead of who God's called them to be, we need them to rise up. Listen to me, man. It's time to rise up. It's time to rise up the next generation. And let me tell you, if we don't do it, the devil's going to take them. It's, 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 I saw this interview that was absolutely crazy. They were interviewing this, this grandma in, in California, one of these states. And they said to this grandma, what do you think about puberty blockers and all this? Mm. And the grandma said, well, you know, I have a granddaughter that leans that way. I think it's a good thing and all that. Mm. And, and, uh, and for whatever reason, the interviewer said to her, and so, uh, you know, I guess somebody had gone by and was tattooed to head to toe or whatever. And they said, so what do you think of tattoos? They said, oh, no. I always told my grandchildren and my children, don't do that. That's permanent. The yeah. puberty blockers, it's okay. But the tattoo, it's not okay. I'm not a tattoo fan. But do you see the craziness of the, right, misconceptions, the misconceptions that people have in their mind? That somehow uh, giving a little child a puberty blocker is all right. But that them getting a tattoo isn't all right. That is crazy to me that children go to the office. They don't need parents' permission to get contraceptives. But if they want an aspirin, they got to phone home. Something's gone wrong. Yes. We need godly men to yes. rise up. Say, I'm putting my yes. foot down. Enough yes. is enough. I'm going to show them what real right. men are and what they're all about. Right. Now, I've realized if you're looking for me to preach stereotypes, I disappointed you today. But I'll tell you this. If you came and said, but I want success like David told his son Solomon. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. You say, well, it's just a Bible verse. It's just a story. Does it work? Oh, do you know that Solomon was became the wisest man to ever live? But not, not only that. Listen, 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 listen. Solomon also became the richest man ever to live. So by following his father's advice, he not only was wise, but history records, he became the richest man. So when David said, you want to prosper in all your ways and everywhere you go, let me tell you, real men, this will work. This will work. It worked as David told Solomon. Solomon practiced what he said as he's a man who lived out what his, his father, who was a man after God's own heart, told him, and he became the wisest and the richest man ever to live live. Wow. This stuff works. Godly men, we're asking you to buck against the curtain. We're asking you to say, don't just flow, go with the flow. We're asking you to say, stand up, rise up, say, guess what? I'm not going to just be what society tries to define me to be, but I am going to be the person that God has called me to be. I'm not going to let the world bring confusion. I'm going to follow the word of God. Two genders. Men, women. It's irrelevant that on a Canadian passport now, you know, you don't have to push man or woman, you can put X. On a Canadian, Canadian passport X. Listen, just bring a doctor in there and check if you don't know. It's time we got to say we ain't playing no more. We're not coming with judgment because here's what here's what this text said. When he told him in the New Testament, and he said, now do it all in love. Right. So what motivates us? Love. 
love for others, love for people around us. We ain't coming at you with judgment. We ain't coming at you to look down on you. But it doesn't mean we're going to just accept what everyone says and accept what everyone does. No, I can love you. Listen, I know this world has a hard time with this. I can love you and disagree with you. Right. Are you hearing me? I know the world thinks if you love me, you must agree with every word that comes out of my mouth like it came from God's mouth. Listen to me. I can love you and disagree with you. It doesn't change how I feel about you, but I disagree. What you're saying is wrong. Listen to me. You, listen to me. You can't say 2 plus 2 equals 142. Now you must believe it because I said it. No, there's right and there's wrong. And we got to stand up because what the Bible says is right. And how do we bring it to the world? We bring it in love. We bring it in care. We bring it in compassion. We show them what it means to be godly men as we live this out, our faith before them in love. In love. So Pam, in a moment, we have we're, we're going to go downstairs and and we have, um, we got free pizza and free pop and games and, games and, and chips for everybody. It's, it's free. It's a different Father's Day that we had. Uh, Charlotte said to me, you know, Pastor invited me to my first Christian uh, basement party. All right. <laughs> so we're going to do that in a few minutes. And we're going to have a good time on this Father's Day. It's going to be a, a great time. But before we get there, we need, to, we need to pray for fathers. We need to pray for young men listen to me we need to pray for our our young boys because I believe what you said there's more pressure on young boys than ever before and the answer is not to push our young boys into stereotypes the answer is to take our young boys and love them and value them for the people God made them to be our, our answer for the young boys is to rise them up according to the standard of the Word of God. These New Testament verses, we look at the end. This is what we need. This is what this generation needs. And I want to pray. I want to pray for it. Every, I know it's Father's Day, and, I, and we'll pray a prayer for the fathers. But today, I want to pray also for our young boys. I don't care if they're two years old. I don't care what their age is. I don't care if they're two months old. I want to pray for our young boys. I want to pray for our teenage. I want to pray for our college age. I want to pray for our young married men and our, our, our senior adult men that we will rise up and be men, real men, men of God, but real men that will rise up, that we won't follow the world's pattern, that we'll go against the flow, that we'll be the people that God has called us to be. Because listen, you do have value. The women saying, well, do you need men? No, that's wrong. You have value. You know what that says to me when they say no? It says because they've not seen a good example. Right. Yes. Women, forgive us when we haven't been a good example. Forgive us, daughters, when we've not been a good example. Forgive us. It wasn't right. It was wrong. When we haven't showed you what a real man is, when somehow we made you think it was about sports and beers and, 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 and working out, watching sports, we're sorry that we made you think that's what a real man is. Whether they enjoy that or not, that's not a real man. If that was the case, then none of the guys in the Bible were real men. None of them. But that's not what the Bible says is a real man. God's looking. 